Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what he said. Uh, so in case you don't want to get recorded, you know, just be quiet. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, so I'm going to show the pictures and you can make comments on your pictures why I'm going to show them. Um, but we'll try to keep it, you know, between three and five minutes, hi Pamela, between three and five minutes, the whole thing, because as I said, we got a lot of submissions. Everyone was very diligent, you know, so um, uh, it, it's, that's very nice to see the whole the particip participation. Um, one more thing, uh, the next month's picture challenge is gonna be sunset. Okay, and I know that everyone has taken some sunset pictures. I want to make it really easy. So if you have a chance, send them before the beginning of next month so it can get into the, uh, the newsletter. And one more item, you know, uh, I send out some uh, notices regarding our show coming up. Uh, and it's coming up on October 10th at the uh, UCC Parish House, which is in, in, in Cornwall. Um, and here we got, I don't know if you can see it much, we got the flyers that's already been printed out and it's going to go to all these places. So we got the advertisements for that. So if you want to participate in the show, uh, come up with three or four pictures there are no uh, real rules and regulation regarding uh, the framing of the pictures as long as it looks kind of okay, you know, classy. All right, because these people at the church are very pricky, okay, and you don't want to be damned for the rest of your life. <laughs> and that was my thing. And I don't know if, if Dan or anyone wants to say anything besides that. Yeah, there was a couple of things to go over. One, um, I'm on vacation, so I don't have the balance that we have in our account. But I think we were running. I think we were running about fourteen hundred dollars in the account, yeah. which is about normal this time of, of year. I've received uh, membership dues from about a dozen people so far. So if you haven't paid your dues, if you could uh, mail a check to me, that I would be good. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also um, recently received a thousand dollar check from the town of Cornwall, and this was uh, organized through um, Laszlo. He wrote a and um, and Pat. And uh, Pat is a school teacher at the uh, high school, I think, because she does a class on photography. And um, her husband, I think he, I don't know if he works for the town, but he has something to do with the collection of the, the yeah. okay, and he has something to do with the collection of the cans. And they pick a, an organization to donate the money from the cans. So Pat mentioned this to Laszlo, and Laszlo wrote a very nice uh, letter to the people in charge, and they um, approved us and we received a check for $1,000. And the plan for the, those funds is to create a scholarship. Um, I'm not sure if we'll do two $500 scholarships or one $1,000 scholarship, but uh, to do a scholarship uh, for HCC to one of the uh, high school students, one or more, depending on how we, how we do it. So we're trying to work on the details and come up with what the criteria is for the scholarship. I put something together and sent it to you, Laszlo and Pat, right before I came on vacation. So I don't know if you got a chance to look at that, but uh, we should probably try to finalize that. And then we can give some more details to the, the club on how that's going to work. Um, if we break it up into $500 increments, then perhaps we could do another 500 next year. And then by, by the third year, figure out how we could um, get together the funds to maybe continue this as a yearly thing. So we'll, we'll see, how that, see how it goes. But uh, that's, that's the plan on how we uh, plan to uh, spend that money. So uh, thank you, Laszlo. And I don't think Pat is on, but thank you for organizing uh, that so that we can do that. Right, right now. 
is just okay. coming up. So you have to repeat everything now that you say. <laughs> <laughs> she knows most of it, but I'll make her at least. <laughs> or, or at least I'll wait dead. till she gets on before I uh, continue. All right. Yeah, it says connecting uh, on my connecting, end. Connecting, connecting, connect. Can you see that? Yep, I can. Hi, Pat. Right. How are you? I'm yeah. doing well. How about you guys? <laughs> All right. So, Pat, I was just telling the um, other club members about um, the thousand dollars that we got from the town of Cornwall and how we intend to use those funds. So I'm not going to repeat the whole thing because you you kind of know uh, what that's all about. But I was just in the process of thanking Laszlo and you for organizing that and so that we're able to to do that on behalf of the club. Yes, that's wonderful. I'm, I'm glad and let's keep um, promoting the interaction between the club and the, the high school. Um, we can um, talk more about that in another time because I, I'm sure you, you have your hands full for tonight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I did want to say thank you and I kind of let the other club members know what that was all about because I did receive the check and I deposited it and, and I also had sent uh, you and Laszlo some ideas about uh, some requirements for it and it's something that we can talk about and continue discussions on, but I wanted to bring them into the loop. So thank you, okay. thank you to you and Laszlo. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. Okay, and then, um, so anyway, that brought our account up to about 2,400, but uh, obviously that money uh, will be going out. So we're running yes, about 1,400. Yeah, again, so if you haven't paid your membership dues, if you could send that to me, that would be good. Typically, we will leave you on the membership list until December, and then we kick you off if it's not in by then. So <laughs> you have a little bit of time, but <laughs> try to get that into me. Um, uh, Laszlo mentioned the show, so I think that we probably need to maybe get a list of who's going to um, participate and we'll get some more details about uh, the, the uh, drop off date for the photos and, um, and Laszlo are they hanging the photos or are we hanging them? Uh, we are going to hang the photos probably I got to talk to Brian when he's going to be around one okay. day. So and, we'll uh, see. We can get a couple of people together to do it. Uh, the show is going to be opening uh, Sunday, October 10th um, at 11.30. And uh, so probably the, the Thursday or Wednesday, probably Thursday before that, we can do the hanging. So count on that, which would be... All right. So we'll send out some details on that and ask for volunteers. Yeah. So uh, look for that. But um, as Lazo mentioned, please make sure that they are, uh, that the photos that you do choose are ready for hanging and that they, you know, are, are professional looking so that they represent the, the club well. And, and there are roughly three or four pictures, you know, all together. That's what they can accommodate. Right. Okay. Uh, three or four pictures per member. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's all I had to go over. I guess I would just mention thank you, Laszlo, for uh, all your work you do on the newsletter and just remind folks to send you articles or, you know, um, sometimes it might be, you know, share your photos of a vacation you went on or if there's a place that you discovered is great to photograph, maybe you could send that information to Laszlo and you could put it in the newsletter. Or if there's any tips that you came across that you think might be useful for members, send it to Laszlo so that, you know, there's some contribution from the club members into the, the newsletter. I did the newsletter myself for about seven years, and I know it's difficult sometimes to come up with the content, and it's, it's a newsletter for the whole club, so the whole club should, you know, participate and, you know, try to send some submissions in, so it doesn't have to be every month, but I know it's a struggle when you're getting ready to finalize it and you don't have enough content, so please uh, remember to send some stuff to Laszlo if you can. Appreciate it. And, uh, I think that that's all I got. Does anybody have any questions about the the club or what what our schedule or anything like that that you need to discuss before we do the member showcase? Uh, Pamela. Pam. Pam. Um, hi everybody. Hi. I'm a new member, so you're hi welcome. <laughs> your Sharon Green pop up and gallery worked wonders. Oh, great. That's the first time we've done that. So that was great. Oh, well, um, 
It was, it was um, I would say, charismatic Laszlo who, who, who started oh, talking geez. with me. God, no, yeah, <laughs> charismatic <laughs> Laszlo. And, and, and then um, I said, well, this seems like a very sympathetic, sympathetic group, a nice group. And, and you'll see my work later. So very honored to be now officially a member of the club. And then I'm gonna go and have to go abroad. Um, so yes, I will have to drop off my three, four images before the 28th. So I don't know where I can drop that off. It's just a quick, you know, you question. Can, you and if can you get want... it to me. I, I I keep seeing your husband every Tuesday coming in for a cup of coffee while we are. Oh, you see my husband. Okay. So he can bring them, or you can bring them either way. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's, he mentioned that's an easy way. That he saw you often. He saw you often yeah. at uh, Giffords. So yeah. we'll do, we'll do. Okay, thank you. Okay, You're welcome. Thank you, thank you. Anything else? Well, I just want to say hi. I'm a new member. Yeah. My name is Maria Gee. Hi, Maria. How are you? Hi. Doing? Um, I'm excited to be part of this club. This I met someone over in Sharon. Um, Maybe Jeff. Could be. Was on the, right? Yeah, it was on the green, mm -hmm. and um, he had given me, you know, just a pamphlet, and then uh, so I just signed up. So um, I'm not very familiar with, you know, your club or what you guys do. Or did you get the um i think i sent that out to the new members so i just want to make sure i included you did you get that um htc it's kind of like a user guide or guidelines did you get that document that i sent no, no okay so that will explain the club and what we do and what competitions we participate in and what this member showcase is so i thought yeah. i sent it to all new members but i might have missed you so i'll yeah, when i get back or, home i'll send it to you yeah maybe went into my spam or something so okay i'll try it yeah. again when i get home then because that will be very yeah. helpful i think and Definitely. pamela you should have got yours did you get yours let, let me just check in my in my second email box one second yeah i think i sent it about i'm gonna say maybe two weeks ago okay so where uh would we drop off um the pictures uh, the pic I will send out, let me make a note for that one. I will send out a note uh, regarding that, okay? okay. So Sounds it's going to be at the, uh, the UCC parish of uh, the United Church of Christ in Cornwall Congregation. That's the longer long version of it. And it's in Cornwall, right in the center of Cornwall. And it's gonna, we are going to be at the parish house, so... I will send you directions and everything and all the direct, you know, what you are supposed to do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, in, and in that document that I sent out, it talks about how to prepare your photos for a show. There's a document that you put on the back of the photo and on the front of the photo that has the information, um, the title of the picture, the price, your name, and contact information, et cetera. So all of that will be in that book that I sent out. And I was thinking of actually just sending that out to everybody just as a reminder to go through that because it talks about the competitions and whatnot. So I think when I get back home, I'll just send that out to everybody. I have it, Don. Wonderful okay, job because it wasn't opened yet. So. I have okay. it and a wonderful photo on the cover. Wonderful photo. Okay, cool. Great. Can I, I just want to um, mention, I don't know if, how many people are aware of the Adobe Max conference. I don't know if you do know about it or if you don't know about it, but it's October 26th through 28th. It's a virtual international conference on creativity and pho photography, and it's oh. free. And you can sign up for it and you can um, join whatever modules you want. There are hundreds of them. And it's over a three-day period. And just, just pick the courses you want to take. And you can get to it by going to max.adobe.com. And you just sign up and you can go to the conference. Uh, Joanne, send me the link and, and I will put it into the next newsletter. Sure. sure. Yeah, thank you for letting thank us you. know about that. Thank you. Bruce? I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Bruce Deckard. I'm a new oh, member as well. And, and um, this is such a strange man at the, Welcome, at the Bruce. Ag Fair named Laszlo, who invited me to this. So I appreciate that. 
that very much. And I'm here to learn as much as I can. Hi, Bruce. Welcome. Thank you. Unfortunately, I won't be around for the show because I have to go out to New Mexico to take pictures. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Poor <laughs> you. <laughs> can I fit in your suitcase? <laughs> <laughs> nice to be here. Thank you. All right. Welcome. All right. Bela? I'll just introduce myself again as well. Hi, Bela Salendi, uh, also a new member. Uh, I'm delighted to meet you all. Uh, I, I found my way here indirectly via Heidi. Hi, Heidi. Thanks for uh, recommending this place to my colleague who then recommended it to me. So uh, here I am, and uh, I'm just already feeling you know, inspired and starting to take my photography a bit more seriously, which is uh, great. So. Happy to be here. Okay. Uh, Bela, uh, Bela is uh, very active on our Facebook site. So in case you, any of you guys are on Facebook, you haven't seen our site, you know, we are, you know, Husatoni Camera Club. Facebook, and he's putting up some extraordinary beautiful pictures, you know, especially still life pictures. Really, really nice, you know. So oh, thank you. We, got a, we, we got a good one for, for the competitions. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to keep you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All these new members, the competition for these competitions yeah. is going to be tough. <laughs> Making so, me nervous. <laughs> can we get started? Yes, I okay. think so. So let's see. Uh, I go with the screen sharing, right? Share it, okay. For some of the news, for some of the some of the new members this uh, member showcase is something that we've done uh, just about every season to kick off the season and uh, typically we can do sl slideshows with music and some combined photos and video and they're they're actually uh, quite awesome but because of the zoom and the re the um i don't know if it's because of the size of the files or the audio or whatnot we kind of had to go with this approach to just show the photos and uh, we can talk about them or just go through them but uh hopefully yeah. uh when we get back to doing face to face maybe we can do another member showcase and kind of do it the, the old way and i think it's uh enjoyable to see the pictures in that way so as I said, you know, we can try to keep it short because it's uh, we got 13 submissions, which is more than we ever got. Thank, thank you for the new members. So um, I'm going to start with Bert. And actually, Bert's is going to be the longest one, but I, I, I asked him, I begged him on my knees to keep it short. So that's <laughs> Do it. So, can you all see my desktop? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's that's a good sign, right? Right over there. Okay. Here is Bert, and let's start with that. Okay. So, Bert. Okay. This well, is you. Th this was it. Thank you for watching, everybody, and <laughs> see you next time. <laughs> that was short. <laughs> <Not last week>. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, I was. Uh, Everybody can hear me, I hope. I was yes. a couple of years ago, I was at a photo conference and one uh, photographer who is uh, very good at close-ups and flowers uh, mentioned a program that he uh, had just noticed. It was called Smart okay. Photo Editor. And here is a quick, uh, what is on their website, what they do. It, uh, it can do a few things uh, quicker than Photoshop, like replacing the background of defocusing it or removing objects or having montages. But the most important thing of this program was that you can use it for effects, mostly effects in photos that you click on one picture and you, I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds of effects in that program. And uh, people who make effects, they putting them up there and you can use them. So I wanna uh, show some of the effects, what uh, I used on some pictures, just sometimes you get bored with, with making nice. And if you have a picture and you wanna do something different, then I go in this program and, and, and try something if that will, will work. So uh, yeah, go to the first uh, picture of Laszlo. 
so this was a, a, a picture from a uh, guy, one of those jumpers on the bicycle. And then with one click, I did, oh, nice. I could make it just in this uh, watercolor picture. Just one click. Uh, the next yeah. picture. Yeah, this, uh, the Autobahn Center had an open day one time. So they had this owl on their arm and so you could get really close to take a picture and the next two pictures i made also in this program from using the picture of this owl this one and this one and then the next picture that was somewhere i think uh, i'm not sure where it was but we took a picture of this plant and then i made this out of it or the program. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, that's, oh, wow. yeah. oh, that's pretty. That's one of those. I mean, one click, you know, so it's really yeah, easy. Right. It is already yeah. baked into it. And, and there are so many. There are, uh, when I started water program, maybe five years ago, there were 600 different uh, effects. I think now they are up to a thousand already. Wow. And uh, yeah, you can, thank God, you can put in your favorites. So yeah. you don't have every time you have to go into thousands, thousands of those effects. This was a still life, what I saw somewhere and it, it looked very boring. And then I thought, well, I let it put in these effects. And I think it made it a lot better. Yeah. So you can see, you can have the effects and then you can save the effect and put it in another effect because the paper and, and the printing or, or this, this border was another effect. So you can, you know, three effects. This yeah. is on the way between uh, Sharon and the- uh, Amenia. Yeah, or Vasey, yeah. And uh, okay, the next effect is if you are in a snowstorm and you took the picture there. I mean, this is, uh, so this is all one, two click effects. What, you know, is sometimes nice to do. I don't think we can use this for a competition. Laszlo and I went one time in, I think it was in Lakeville. There was a powwow and then- Great Barrington. Uh, what do you say? Great Barrington. Oh, it was in Great Barrington, you're right. And then I made this, uh, this kind of old movie still out of it. So the next, mm -hmm. you know, it has already baked in those little little yeah. things for if it is a listen, little film thing. This is was in uh, Cambodia, very famous uh, temple. And, uh, you know, I, they have tons of different types of frames what you can put on it and what you can what you can use it for. Yeah, keep going. This we took, uh, I think it was also with Laszlo and Rick here when we walked somewhere in the Autobahn Center. And you can also do it, different types of frame. I think a lot of people who make cards or posters use this program to make it a little bit more interesting what they sell, which special for the flowers. Mm. That's beautiful by itself. Yeah. It's close. The nice thing is that you, you can keep trying things and some, some work and some not, but that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's because there are so many different different thing. This, this bird was taken on my bird feeder from close by and look at the next picture. You don't have an idea here. So baked in is already the rippled water with the reflection. <laughs> so it's, it's really, and it's almost like it also like it is a watercolor, you know? And then the next one is actually, you can make it in a book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's neat. Crowspeak. <laughs> rabbit. And this little rabbit. Uh, this one make this one into a uh, rabbit stew. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, <laughs> so I gave him some artificial uh, 
actually producing them. Food. This doll I saw in an uh, antique store somewhere. I had no idea what, what I could do with it, but I made the doll for <laughs> twins. <laughs> Uh, that's kind of creepy. I don't think I like that one. <laughs> so you have uh, also very nice frames and 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 so that, that, that's a nice frame. Everything sure. you know what uh just yeah, want so frame. this is the yeah. picture yeah. I mean this is a fair this was one thing what what distorted it very much but it is still kind of an interesting look it's on the uh, Housatonic River here uh, kind of very modern uh, <laughs> modern art the end yeah. of my photography okay this we saw this uh, Luke Marman artist one of those those people who uh, defaced that so I thought well it needs to be in a frame looks oh. a little better there okay That's good. go on this uh, woman I took also in one of the photography conferences they have a lot of models there and I thought her eyes were so amazing so I wanted to actually get more emphasis on her eyes so I took this with it and is the same paper texture that was used in one of the other photos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you have that, and then you said, well, let's do it on some other other texture or other paper. I mean, yeah. they have this, uh, yeah, they have in categories. This was in, uh, in Vietnam about, I think, last year. This is a place where there are a lot of weddings. And actually, there was a photographer behind them, which I took away, the, which I took out. In, in Photoshop, and then I thought, well, let's see if I can make it a little bit more interesting. Mm. So let's make it a little older, older looking. This was a little bonsai tree. And uh, yeah, I made an, uh, kind of an impressionistic view from it. <laughs> Mm. And those little Vietnamese girls, I it looks like me kind of a picture book setting, so that's what I try to do with it. I mean, so the thing is, if you yeah, go ahead, Laszlo. So if you do this, then they completely become like the drawing, you know, and then you can uh, brush out what you don't want to have done. So then it's uh, kind of an, an, an artificial effect. And this is the last one. These are uh, four cats and uh, what I saw somewhere. And I absolutely don't like cats. So the next one, <laughs> I made oh these, this is how i see cats you know that they're, they're creepy animals for me so uh so in the uh the next slide will give you the website if you're interested yeah all right and i think the program is maybe 30 35 dollars mm -hmm. so if you uh and it and you can uh, check it out for for free for a month i think so it's uh, yeah i think it's 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 a steal especially if you like to to play a lot <laughs> with your with your pictures now and then okay. all right let's see let's go back to the thank you bert really appreciate it that's thank you, bert. I that was good. you yeah. can get a lots of great effects with these things you know can, can i ask a question go ahead hmm? Sally, are you Dutch? Yeah. Okay, because my best friend when I grew up in Holland was Sandra Ackerman. And I wonder if she's related to you from The Hague? Uh, well, she's not related. Well, all Dutch people are related, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> a small that, would, that would be a crazy coincidence if Sandra Ackerman would be your little niece. And, and no, I that is my, my, my. My wife is Ackerman, and she, but because I'm Bert Smith, silly, I'm on my wife's computer. So that's why the name 
Okay. See, you see, you see Shelly's name there. <laughs> okay, never mind. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> oh, next one is down. So unfortunately, I get to follow Bert, and mine's a lot boring compared to his. But <laughs> <All right. laughs> what I basically did is put together just a a um, showing of pictures from the various national parks across the United States. I like to visit the parks and with my family. And I've been there's I think there's. 63 national parks and I've only been to about nine of them so I have a lot more to go but uh, these are just photos from some of the ones that I have visited so you can go that's beauty Pamela that probably makes you feel at home right oh totally yes <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh wow that's ice more ice I'm shivering yeah, so I've been there twice. So this was the most recent visit um, in 2018 or 2019. Beautiful. Yeah. So these pictures are from 2012, as you can see. So I went back and tried to reprocess them. I'm not even sure what camera I had back then. But uh, yeah, this was Denali National Park. We didn't have the greatest weather. Nice black and white. And this is Congaree. This was a tough one to photograph. I went there um, this past uh, summer in June, I think it was. And uh, the water was very, very low. Sometimes the water's so high, it goes over this boardwalk and it was so low, yeah. but it, it just made, it was, it was difficult to photograph. There just wasn't a lot there. <laughs> We did see this little guy going in. It's beautiful. I never see an owl out in the open. I, I caught this guy, tracked him a little, a little ways. I'm not sure he said something in his mouth. I don't know what that was, but it was almost bigger than him. <laughs> like a butterfly. And this is where the water is supposed to be much higher and it's quite low, so it doesn't look the most beautiful, but uh, I wanted to at least show what it looked like off the boardwalk. Lots of snakes were in there. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, so this was the Badlands that I went to in 2018. That place was just beautiful. The colors are amazing. So my sister, <laughs> we went uh, we went hiking through the Badlands, my sister and I, and uh, my mother was afraid for us because of the rattlesnakes. But uh, I saw this little bird on the sign, so I had to take it. We didn't tell her about the sign till after we were done hiking, though. No. <laughs> Everyone can a... see the pictures all right, I suppose, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. oh, that's good. Yeah. Just want to make sure. All of it there. Yeah, so in, in addition to the landscape, I like to take photos of the wildlife. So I do, I do that whenever I'm in the parks. Yes. So this one is um, one of our newest uh, parks. I think this one became a park when Obama was in office. Um, this is in California. And uh, I fly out there frequently for work. So uh, I usually try to take an extra day or so and go to the park. So this year I went to Yosemite and um, I think this was 2019, I went to the Pinnacles. So my sister and I hiked from the bottom to the top. It took most of the day to get up there and back down, but it was beautiful. It was worth it. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's how it got the name, huh? Something like that. And then this guy we saw as we were driving out, we didn't see hardly any wildlife. <laughs> we wanted to see the vultures. They were supposedly vultures there. We couldn't see any, but, uh, but I saw this guy. Great shot. So I don't get to travel out of the country much, but as you can see, we have an awful lot to see in the United States. That's, that's pretty. So the Shenandoah, I went there um, this past summer. 
again, right after I went to Congaree, I went to Shenandoah and the weather did not cooperate. So one of the things about Shenandoah is it has beautiful scenery, but I didn't get to see a lot of it because it was very foggy and I only had one day. So we did go on some hikes. So the Appalachian Trail goes through there. So my sister and I hiked a portion of the Appalachian in the park. Nice. So I did the best I could with the fog. <laughs> That's a good fog, brilliant. And then the, the Grand Tetons and Yellowstone are my two favorite parks and they're the parks that I visited the most. I've been to, uh, to each of them three times. So this was obviously in the Grand Tetons. I forget what the name of that church is. Ready? But it's beautiful there. And they, they have a road called Moose Wilson Road and you almost always see moose on that road. <laughs> Hence the name. And I came across this guy who was uh, doing a painting in the Tetons and I asked him if I could take a photo and he, he said yes. So it was kind of neat. He's taken a He's actually paint. Actually, he's painting those birch trees that are over on the right hand side. You can see if you look at his picture, and then you look over at the birch trees, you'll see that's what he was painting. Nice. Yeah, like I said, Yellowstone, um, which actually uh, encompasses three different states, mostly Wyoming, but there's a section of it in Idaho and a small section in Montana. But uh, this one I've been several times. So these pictures are from either 2012, 14, or 16. There's actually a trail now that you can take and you can get up to the top and view this from the top. And uh, it's beautiful. But my sister and I, we've been there three times and all three times the trail was closed. <laughs> so we haven't gotten up there yet. So we got to go back. Oh, that's pretty, pretty cool. The thing I like about Yellowstone too is it has so much wildlife. You see more wildlife there than any of the other parks. The colors are amazing there. Look at this. It has so much color and texture. And you can get very close to these places, right? I mean, these. Yeah, yeah, they have the boardwalks that go up right alongside these. Wow. Mm. wow. And these are my most recent. So it was quite um, hazy when I went to Yosemite because of the fires that are in California right now. They did affect the view. So we went out um, at sunrise trying to. Uh, get some photos, but it was quite, like I said, quite hazy, but uh, we didn't do too bad. Oh. Yeah, so that's half, half dome, I guess is what that's called. That's from other direction. So I always um, saw these photos with reflections and, and most of the water is dried up in California. So we were almost exiting the park and I saw this little pull off. Nobody was there. I said to my sister, well, let's just go see what's down there. It's like, I, I, it looks like there's a little stream or something. Let's just go. And when I went down there, I was so shocked to see this was the view from, <laughs> from there. So we were the only ones there and it was just enough water. That's like two inches deep, but just enough to get some reflections. It's an iconic shot. Yeah, as a matter of fact, when I drove down the road, so we got in the car, so we went down this steep bank, we got this picture we all by ourselves, we were so happy with ourselves, and we got in the car and we drove, oh my gosh, we drove like uh, one minute, and then there was a pull-off that had almost that same view. <laughs> so that's why you see that all the time. And then this is the latest one that I went to, is Acadia up in Maine, we just got back from there. This was Cadillac Mountain, yeah. We, um, 
you have to get reservations now to go up and uh we got the reservation and uh, it was so foggy, couldn't see anything. So each day they open up the reservations again at 1030 in the morning and you can try to get same day reservations. And we were able to do that. So we went back in the evening and we were able to get some nice shots in the evening. Nice. Great. Beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful shots. Great. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, we have uh, lots of traveling, that's for sure. Well done. All right, let's see. Next one is Heidi. Heidi, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Good. So Dawn is a really hard act to follow. Um, <laughs> and I don't have a theme, but I am a, just a quick intro for those who don't know me. I am a beginner photographer. So um, the good news is I've got more shots in this than I did last year. So that's a plus. Good. And my theme uh, is pictures that came out well, <laughs> pictures that came out well in the last four to five months. So um, this first one here is a barn swallow. I took this picture at Bartholomew's Cobble nearby. And I took it the day after taking Sarah Blodgett's uh, course on how to take pictures of birds. So this is one of my favorite ones. And there's another one coming up, this one. Uh, is quite possibly my favorite photo to date. I call it Be Right Back. Mm -hmm. And everyone knows I, I think that I, I love birds. And so I really, really like this one. And this is one of the ones that I recently had printed because I'm going to have it framed and bring it to our show. Good. That's a good choice. Very good. nice. Uh, this one is cabin number five. Um, this uh, was a shot that I took when I went with um, uh, Jeff on the Hudson field trip through the club. And he took us to this area called, I don't know if it's officially called, Shantytown. Uh, yeah. Or this is a name that Laszlo made up, I'm not sure. But this, <laughs> was, um, this is one of the camps, and, or I guess that used to be uh, like a fishing camp. And it's since been abandoned, as you can tell. And the irony of this picture is that there's actually a little lock on that door, even though the side is completely open. <laughs> that's cute. Well, that's, I don't know what that one was. Okay. So um, this is a daffodil I took at uh, Laurel Ridge Daffodils um, nearby. And I made it there pretty late in the season. Um, so I'm surprised that there's not any dying daffodils in the background. I think it, it came out nice and clear, but this was one of the ones that I was pretty happy to get a shot where no dead daffodils were there. So next year I have it on my calendar to go earlier so that I can get them, uh, all in bloom. It's a nice clear shot. Well um, this one I took up in Camden, Maine. Um, I really... I really like the lines in this photo. So this was uh, Camden, Maine. We were up at the harbor. Um, I just love how we've got the line from the sail, the line from the boat, and then in the middle, sandwiched in between, we've got the, um, the steering wheel. And I just, this seemed like an iconic boat photo to me. Yeah. I also like the, um, the red, white, and blue that's in the flag, and then the red, white, and blue that's in the boat and the life jacket. Or it looks red to me, the life jacket and the sail. Kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. And then with the blue, it just sort of all tied together. Um, so yeah. just walking along, you know, the waters that happened to catch that shot, which it was really a very bright day, and there weren't a lot of great shots for me to be had. So I was pretty happy with that one. Yeah, that was nice. Lovely. Uh, this is a mushroom shot um, taken on a hike up to Bear Mountain, Connecticut. Um, I really hate mushrooms. I presume this is deadly poisonous, um, but it was really cute. And this is at the base of a tree and it sort of looks like a little, I don't know, a, a table in Lilliput land. Uh, I this, we're learning about everyone's. Oh. this again is um, Shantytown. I call this one um, the Hudson Riviera. Mm. <laughs> um, and this one is the George Washington Bridge. So my husband and I had to go to a, a wedding in New Jersey and we were in traffic 
driving slowly and I was in the passenger side and I took this with my iPhone 8. Um, and then I cropped it way in and to my surprise, it came out really clear. So clear that I just had a, a big picture of it printed and I will be framing it for the show. So it shows that you can take really good pictures with your iPhone, which is always with you. Yeah, and that's it. Nice. All right, thank you, Heidi. Thank you. All right, next one is Ian. Do we know that guy? Yes. Sure. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Right. This is um, down on the river, very close by us. And it's just some foam in the background, obviously, with some bluebells. And it's just, I just love bluebells anyway. But that's a nice, clear shot. And this is, um, it was England playing against Australia rugby and in 20, I think 16. And I just love the picture. I was in the crowd and these two guys were sitting next to me. And I said, can I take, a, take your picture? And that's, that was the result. And I, and I, I love the picture of the, the expressions of the two guys on the left. And then if you look bottom right, there's a man who's oh. shouting at something. <laughs> Either that or, or there's something seriously wrong with him. Anyway, but it's, it's a lovely picture. And, uh, so anyway, that, that, that's that, a good shot. It is it's 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 great, and and um, I'm I've never actually done anything with it, but I I just enjoy the picture. It's just fantastic. But you know, more at the moment. Anyway, next please. And this is a, a little dipper, um, which was taken at the same time as the foaming water, the first picture you saw, and um, they are just such little. They're water blackbirds. They're just beautiful little creatures and um, the next one is a dipper mm -hmm. not so good flying i just um nice. got a new camera which is a, a an olympus em1 mark three and because of my stroke and everything so it, it's a bit easier to to, to handle and um, i'm just learning to use it so it's the iso is a bit a bit high and that was anyway right Next is top left, Hand of God. Um, that's my, one of my sunset pictures, which I might put in. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's yeah. It. yeah. And, and that's not, not quite the view from our house, but it's, it's a view above our house, about 100 yards above the house. They don't always get sunsets like that, but it's, it is actually, actually it's the equinox now, so they're, they're pretty good com coming up this next few weeks. That is that's fantastic. Beautiful. Um, this is a girl called Hattie Briggs. I'd never been to a, a concert before like this, but I was, or we, Jane and I were invited to um, to go to it. It's just down below us. And um, she was, have any of you heard of Alfie Bow? Um, no. He's quite a well -known, um, singer in this country. And she was, singing with him around the country on, on various tours that he went. And she, she's got a lovely voice, beautiful voice. Anyway, right. And this is, <laughs> uh, I was on a, on a walk and it's, it's unfortunately, it's not real. It's a, but a wonderful character. I just think he's absolutely, and Lazaro likes him as well. I just think he's fantastic. And, oh, and, and the, the, this is Charlford, very close to where we live. And I gave it some, it's a, an old looking village. So I gave it some old looking treatment and um, that's come out quite well. It works. Very nice. Yeah. And this is, we, we went at Slimbridge, Peter Scott, Sir Peter Scott, you've probably heard of him. Um, he's, he founded Slimbridge and we went on a safari with the, um, the camera club, Stroud Camera Club. And this was a picture of a bitten, which suddenly took off. And I, I fired off for quite a few shots and um, I put all four of them together. So that's, I quite like that. It's, it's quite a... Yeah, that's neat. Yeah. yeah. And then this is a, an architectural oh, site nice. that the camera club also went to, very close to us. <clears throat> and it's, I think, just a 
I mean, there's some such clever people around, and I'm just noticed that I've actually caught, totally by accident, the um, the shadow in in the bottom right. So. Oh yeah, that's neat. Yeah. That's, that's quite nice to see. Anyway, it's just gorgeous. Mm. And then this is um, the Olympics. We won a gold in England. British um, GB won a, a gold in the. Um, new new discipline which is skateboarding and this is actually um, cycling BMXing but anyway all of a sudden I, I discovered that we've got this park four miles from where I live and Charlotte Worthington who won the gold for, for, for Great Britain um, trained here and these youngsters are just utterly amazing. And you wouldn't believe it, but can we, can we see the next picture, please? All right. Um, this is what they're sort of thing they're getting up to doing. And then the next. Oh. And they are absolutely incredible. And this, this, this complex is now closed. You wouldn't believe it. Britain does something really fantastic. It gets it's fantastic. And we, we got a, a, a um, a bronze, a 13 year old girl got a bronze in um, skateboarding, and then it has now been closed. But anyway, the hope is that we're going to be able to, they'll, they'll be able to get another one going soon. Oh. Um, but these people, these youngsters, they've got you know, so much energy and enthusiasm, and they're, they're all so complementary to each other and are really enthusiastic and supportive, and that keeps them off. I save the streets, but it keeps them occupied, keeps them doing things, and it's absolutely wonderful. This is um, Shelsley Walsh, which is the oldest hill climb in the in the world, I believe. And this is wow. going up. And then the next one is another one going up. Wow. But he looks like he's going down, but he's actually going up. <laughs> I was just spinning, that's for sure. Yeah. And then this is a short-horned grasshopper which I saw on a um, we've got a wonderful nature um, park for um, butterflies etc very close by and saw that there that detail is amazing that's cool yeah and oh wow that's beautiful. that's beautiful yeah hmm. Sure. Nice. Who was it posing for you? Mm -hmm. Very nice. Those are beautiful. Very nice. Very nice, Ian. Awesome. Are you yes. talking, Ian? Can you hear us? Yes. Ian? Ian here. Yeah. He's a little frozen. Oh. It's again? Huh. Oh. That was a nice, nice show though, but nice variety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I suddenly just <laughs> it's gone, huh? Uh -huh. All right. Next one is gonna be Jeff. Jeff, are you here? I don't think so. But he did submit pictures, so I just going to go through the through them. Nice. It's these. Nice. I think he took these pictures at the Audubon in in Sharon. Yeah, I think so. Or B bomb. Ready. And that's what is hard to do, you know, to catch that little bird in flight. It's nice, just to, just enough motion to show the wings are moving, yeah. but you can still see the detail in the bird. It's nice. That's a field of 112 between Lime Rock and, uh, and Lakeville. It's like Black Eyed Susie's. Yeah. Same field, I presume. Oh, 
that was at a revolutionary war. No, no, sorry, was the French Indian War. Was it French Indian? Yeah, French Indian War reenactment in Goshen, Connecticut. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice, some nice, nice black and whites and some really nice stuff. Very classy. I Good like the black on. and whites. Here Good comes Joanne. On. Joanne has got all black and white pictures. Let me just see. Why do I have small? Okay. Here we go. Thanks. There we go, Joanne. Are, are you here? I am. Okay. So, if you want to say a few words about them, sure. Um, the this is um, the Poughkeepsie train station. I had done a study of this several years ago for um, someone who had who I was doing photography with, and it's just basically <laughs> a, the whole series was about passages. So this you can go to the next one. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh. Um, it's a fascinating building, and uh, until I took a look at it with black and white photography, I never realized exactly the angles and the amount of architecture there was to see there. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Back in there. I think the next picture came out uh -oh. rather small, so I'm just going okay, to. Okay, you can just skip it. And this was um, actually one of the passages and I happened to catch this mom and her daughter and it occurred to me that they were in absolutely two different worlds and they weren't waiting for a train they were just there and mom was on her phone and the little girl was just off on her side and I thought to myself wow they have all this time together and they're just hanging out in two separate spaces. Go ahead. That's a precious moment. Yeah. Another one of the passages, which actually smells really bad. Oh. <laughs> and that's inside the station? It is between the station and the parking lot, looking from the platform out towards uh -huh. the parking lot. And no problem getting inside, huh? Oh, no. <laughs> and that's uh, yeah. where you go to take the train. And there was, happened to be nobody there that day. Uh, well, this is nice. my favorite building of all time. This is the Bardivan 1869 Opera House in Poughkeepsie. And uh, for years I've ushered there and no longer do that. But because of that, I was always able to explore the theater when there was nobody around. So it was just, it's a, it's a really magical building. So that's the lobby before a performance. Go ahead. Beautiful place. Yeah, it's um, it's got amazing lines, amazing history, really wonderful architecture. Mm -hmm. Go, just some detail from the theater. One of the flies and the and the ropes to pull up from the old days that they saved. Mm -hmm. And that's oh, beautiful side of the theater. Gorgeous theater. It is beautiful. This is the Unicorn <coughs> Pavilion in Milan, which is also one of my favorite buildings. And um, I'm one of my relatives um, was one of the architects for this building. And so I got to go in on a day when the building was closed and he brought me in and we did a little tour. Um, fascinating building, totally eco green building with lots of solar energy and all of those um, those uh, panels on the windows uh, move and they rotate according to where the sun is. So the, the inside of the building is always flooded with light. Um, you can go. Oh, and nice. From, from wow. the side of the entrance to the pavilion looking up at the unit credit. Very nice framing. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't me, it was the architect. <laughs> <laughs> This is the inside. Well, you have a good eye. Yeah. 
This is the inside of that building with the rotating um, louvers. And this is actually a nursery where the employees' um, children go to school. And it's completely light filled and every all of the furniture and all of the walls uh, move and rotate and can serve various functions. Fascinating building. Go ahead. Um, this is the staircase getting from downstairs up into a, a multi-purpose area where they have conferences. Really amazing lines in this building. Mm. Nice to see these um... And this is just some outside shots that I took of texture. I was sort of playing around with how, how many different textures I could find. This is at Innisfree. In I was just going to say that. It looks like Innisfree. Yeah. <laughs> Goblin is at Innisfree. It almost looks like petrified meerkats. <laughs> yes. That's the only place I've seen those. So yeah. it looked familiar. Oh. Um, this is at Montgomery Place. Oh, that's and I cool. happened to be walking with a friend of mine, Karen, and having to turn around and this was behind us. And, and it was one of those things where you walk by it, you don't see it. And then if you look behind you, you say, hmm, I didn't even know that was there. Yeah, that's cool. And this was um, at uh, Great Camp Sagamore in the Adirondacks. I was just playing with texture and curves. And I think the last one, this I call the trouble with tribbles. If anybody hmm. is a Star Trek fan, you know what I'm talking about. These <laughs> little guys were along the side of the road and they just looked to me like little little creatures, little hairy creatures. So cool. And I think that's it. Thank I you, John, for the beautiful black and white. Sure. They were great. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, re really nice, Joanne. Really strong graphic sense. Thank you. Line and texture. Fun. A lot of fun to work in black and white. Nice. Nice. All right. Next one is me. All right. Uh, let's see. What do we start I right do. over here? Oh, these are mainly going to be sunset and sunrise pictures. Uh, we went away on vacation to Warwick, Rhode Island, and uh, Okay. Well, I got up early and I went to bed late, you know, so I, I got these pictures and that's basically, that was at the, at the place where we were staying, you know, that's just outside of, uh, of, the, of the window, pretty much. They, they had beautiful sunrises and, and really gorgeous sunsets, you know, just, I, I don't know what it is, but yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. And this is uh, like a little sandbar. At the end of it, there is a, uh, uh, well, uh, lighthouse. Yeah. And the, the sandbar is, uh, gets underwater when the tide comes up. And, and lots of times it comes up very soon. So just a week before we got over there, a couple of people were washed away and died. You know, that's how fast the tide comes up. Okay, so that's just absolutely amazing. Here's the memorial for the little girl, 10 years old, who died in there. And that's Senpar. That's another thing. Oh. The whole town was mourning her. And these are the customary seagulls, you know, and the lighthouse in the back. The lighthouse a little bit closer. It was a really nice one. All right, now where are we going? Something happened over here. My computer froze. So you guys, I don't know what's going to happen now. My computer completely froze. That's no good. People moving, but my keyboard is dead. Okay, all right, let's go back over here. All right, good. And that's, I think that's the same picture, but a little bit kind of like artistic rendering of it. Yeah, oh, that's nice. Just a uh, different way of looking at things. 
And that one is at Rocky Point, it's called. Uh, they used to have a amusement park over there many, many years ago. That's what it was famous about. And that's at sunrise again. There's the same bridge at sunrise. That lady was walking over there with her dog and picking up garbage that other people left on the previous night. Oh boy. Very kind of her. And that's the same place, Rocky Point. Again, the sun is rising. Makes me wish I would get up earlier in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be at the ocean. Uh, I'm here in Provincetown and I didn't get up that early. Oh. <laughs> Oh, you have the best sunsets and sunrises. Yeah. I got the sunset, but the sunrise is too early. And now I'm going home tomorrow, so I, mi um, I miss, missed out, I guess. <laughs> Those are beautiful, I saw. And these are came from the World Fair, you know, somehow ended up over there. So don't ask me. No one seems to know how they got there. And that uh, when she was just, I don't know what she probably reading, having her cup of coffee early in the morning. Good job. These guys fishing and he just caught something. How long do you have to wait for that? Uh, <laughs> it's about 10 minutes. <laughs> People are just, I don't know, just by the shoreline, you know, so I just like the way that she looked. And that's a crab that Demise, met, met, met the demise. I don't know what you call it. Just died. <laughs> That's another one. That one is not alive either. It looks pretty harmless to me. On the other side of the bay, they had these uh, uh, windmills. That's an industrial area. So I, one night I just took a picture of that. Uh, well, it was really at, at dusk, you know. So. That's what it looked like. Lovely. And these are again fishermen's on that uh, sandbar. You know, you know, try to get something over there. But you can see the waves, and then then these things. You know, when they uh, go move really fast, you know, you just can't outrun them. You know, just these yeah. people are crazy standing there. That uh, was one of those huge container boats that uh, crossed the bay. A guy out on his Good shot. Yeah, beautiful ride. And that's another sunset, people on the beach, you know, just. Laszlo, tell me again where we are. Where are you here? Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Warwick, Rhode Island. Warwick, okay. The little kid playing at sunset. Oh, nice. It's probably yeah. Brian or one of his friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love that. That's beautiful. That looked like a turtle to me, you know. Yeah, just... I agree. Yeah, it does. Okay. That's cool. That's it. Beautiful. That's for me. I, I get lots of sunset pictures, you know, so I, I'm all set for the, what do you call yep. it? Uh, oh, yeah. uh, that's, that's why you yeah. chose that topic for the newsletter. Exactly. Right? Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to make it easy on myself. Here's I'm multiple... glad you did sunset instead of sunrise. I'd be yeah. in trouble. <laughs> Well, you can't tell the difference. Uh, here's Moby's. His is in PDF format, so let's see how it will come 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 out. All right, here it goes, Moby. Okay. Moby. okay. Um, let's see. Don't worry. You're not going to get 2,021 ruminations. <laughs> 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 but they all come they all come from this year uh, right. beginning with one of three self portraits next <laughs> there's there's a second self portrait next oh. 
Now, you may remember a spectacular sunset in uh, April. Uh, I made this photo uh, from a field uh, next to our house that belongs to a neighbor. It's been uh, enhanced a bit, perhaps excessively, but I'm not sure. But uh, it was a spectacular sunset. Laszlo, can you move it up a little? Yeah. The pot of gold is yours. <laughs> okay. okay. Next. The moon. Uh, I'm going to try to make more photos of the moon, but I was um, pretty lucky with this one with a smartphone. Um, Is it a smartphone? Yeah. yeah. Oh also, yes. also back in April. Uh, that, next. That's good for a smartphone. <laughs> Uh, many of you probably <laughs> know, know this hillside from photos that Brian has shared with us. It's um, on Route 41 in Sharon going towards, uh, uh, going south. And uh, it's just a beautiful curve. Yeah, and there it is, a cow a pasture of, without a cows. Little yeah. flower over there too, you know that. Okay, nice. next. Um, let's see if we can get, okay, we've got both, uh, maybe a little higher, Laszlo. Okay. Uh, two different photographs of the same fence. The moral is that sometimes a second try uh, pays off. I think the bottom is photograph is uh, really much better than the top. Uh, this was in a exhibit at the Sharon Historical Society uh, earlier this year titled Renewal, Rhythm and Repetition. I think the photograph fills the bill and I gave it a title, uh, diminuendo, um, for lack of a, of, of a better thought. Uh, next. Um, Daylilies nearby, an interesting example of how a low f-stop can really put the background out of focus while the uh, foreground and subject is in focus. Uh, next. Good choice with the... Um, I find I'm fascinated by the beauty of many of our stamps. And these are two that I put together. Um, and I'm, <laughs> I've got a lot of other stamps sitting around that I will probably photograph at some point, but I think the Mayflower and the Constellation go quite well together. Beautiful, especially the top one. I like the Mayflower. Well, it's the stamp. Okay, the next few photographs um, have a little story behind them. 10 years ago, look at the date at the top. Uh, working draft, October 15, 2012, almost 10 years ago. I finished two books based on uh, teaching ESL for nearly 10 years uh, when I uh, used my photographs uh, to get the students to write about the photographs. One, the first book was Verbalize the Visual, book one, 50 Challenges. Next slide, please, Laszlo. And the second book was We Speak English, We Write English, We Read English by Immigrants Learning English. Next slide, please. And that second book was my, there, 
my students um, stories about my photographs. Uh, so the two books each had the same 50 photographs in them on the right hand page. The first book at the top had the uh, assignment sheet, vocabulary words and questions and hints. And the second book uh, had their stories. Uh, this particular photograph I made from uh, a weather vane, uh, which I have in my uh, living room. But uh, the sad story from 10 years ago is that I did the books and the sponsor did not get the funding. So the books were never published. Oh, then uh, early in the, this year, I said to myself in the middle of COVID, uh, well, why don't you see what you can do with them? So I contacted an organization called Ed Advance here in Connecticut, which works with local high schools. And I volunteered to teach English as a second language. After a few months, they invited me in for an interview and I showed them the, the books and I said, you know, they're ready to go. And they said, fine, um, you're hired, hired. So I am now an employee of Ed Advance teaching English as a second language. Uh, well, well done. Using, using the books that I finished uh, 10 years ago. Brilliant. And, the, and, they, and they paid for printing them. So um, we're off and running. Next slide, please. Perseverance pays off. There we go. Uh, teaching English as a second language at the Housatonic Valley Regional High School two nights a week um, using the books. Now, I tell this story because we've got room for more students. And if any of you uh, have uh, employees or know of uh, 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 immigrants, who would benefit from ESL lessons, uh, there is space in a class which will basically focus on talking about and writing about um, the 50 photographs that I put together in those two books. One final self-portrait. Thank you, uh, Laszlo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. The world is crazy. Uh, white is black and black is white. So that's it. Uh, some ruminations from 2021. Thank well you. done. That was very good. Very, very, very different. Thank you. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Okay. All right. Nancy Zanini. Nancy, are you here? I am. Oh, that's good. But well, you have been so quiet. I didn't even know that well, you. You know, I, I, I'm not. Oh, it's, I forgot which one this was. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. The, since these photographs were all taken while walking my dog, so within a mile or two of my house and along Mudge Pond. And this is just. You know, a crazy looking bird. A, a flutter. A oh, and we I've spent a good deal of time in my kayak trying to catch a great blue heron catching a fish. And it, it's it's an exercise in patience. They they do a fair amount of I won't call it shattering because the sound isn't that loud, but their jaws are incredibly large. I don't know if I even have in here the one, Laszlo. Okay, next one. Could that be? Oh. Oh, this is also, um, this was the, the last day of August and this little girl and her father were taking turns jumping off the high dive. I thought it was a relative of yours. 
<laughs> no, sorry, Laszlo. Oh, that's a cute nice. looking bird. Her father was diving and she was, oh yeah, this is, yeah, this, this is the a different day, the same blue heron who was in the same spot. And his colors change so dramatically and he just really looks angry. <laughs> oh, God. There's no fish in the pond. <laughs> well, actually he, he did. Oh. <laughs> and this, this is really, it's, he's looking right at me. I'm in my kayak. Yeah. So it's slightly <laughs> soft, but he just stared right at me and I flicked away and this is the result. Mm, well, well, well taken. Oh, that's nice. Ooh, oh, and this is you know, just some dead sunflowers that were floating in the pond as, as somebody had tossed away a, a bouquet, sort of sadly romantic. Hmm. Oops, we're done. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Very, nice. Very interesting pictures. Brilliant. Oh, I think you. Thank you. Thank you. Pamela Peters. Pamela. Pamela, are you here? I am. I am here. I, I've been just taking all in and, and saying how lucky I am to be a part of this club now. Well, we are lucky. Yeah. We are here. Nice, nice group of people with time for attention and detail and, and yeah, that's what life is all about. Oops. Anywho, um, just a, a, a little, you know, um, inside of, of why I'm doing this. I, I'm an environmental economist. I'm an environmental economist. And so I have different tools to open up people's hearts and minds towards the beauty and the abundance of Mother Earth, our planet. And I started to really train my eye being behind a film camera for my first TV show because I had no budget. But I had a lot of willpower. And so because of that, I actually trained my eye and somebody said you have talent and I said well let's do something with it so um, this is one of my first photographs on the left after the storm in Mexico um, which is part of a car deck and this was after a storm a crazy storm I thought life on earth would end but then when you blow it up it's like this Japanese you know painting this was five years ago my first solo art show at the town hall. And tomorrow I'm hanging my second solo art show. So this is the photograph of the first art show. Um, and then another time I'll show more of the people. So I focus on the planet, Mother Earth, and on the people. And it's all about love and light. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, the photos you see are all part of a card deck that that um, is a 31 day workshop, you know, of retraining people to actually start listening to the language of Mother Earth. Um, and that looks like this. This is the cover of the deck. So I just take three photos. Um, this, is great. this is on the road towards Great Barrington. And I always like to go. On the, I always like to go lower towards where the things happened. Um, this is a card entitled Roots, to go back to our roots as human beings, making people think, where the heck do we come from? And what's our purpose in life? So it's kind of philosophical. Uh, next slide, please. Ooh, again, I kind of kneel down to where Mother Nature wants to have a conversation with me. And this is the card that calls for standing out. Look at those five little girls Totally excited, there's nothing there. This is the Arctic where I go with my husband um, on expeditions and I'm the media girl. So I bring photo camera and film camera and then I do outreach education with the indigenous people and I have them make art and I showcase that as well. So we have universal languages connecting kids around the world. Um, I love this one, the colors and these girls definitely dare to stand out, which we all should do. Next slide, please. Nice. This is a, a photograph I took in Belgium. I'm originally from Belgium, from Antwerp. 
And uh, we love to bicycle a lot. We bicycle almost towards everywhere. Um, and this is the metaphor for how do you want your life to be? Do you want to be full bloom? Do you want to show your potential? And this is our national flower, the poppy. Or on the right side, do you just want to not show your colors and not go full? And so again, it's like um, exercise in, in, in making people dig a dip, dig, dig a dip, dig. I have, I just came back from Manhattan two days, nonstop seminars, I'm exhausted at this point but I will try my best. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, yes. This is uh, the card called Pearl. And this was during my honeymoon in Bali after a nice massage, um, totally relaxed. I sat down on the patio and I start to look at a little flower, uh, a little greasy plant. And I love it when these drops of, of rain just stick on top. There's some plants that do that. And then I started to meditate on the meaning of pearls. And pearls are beautiful, but it really comes first and foremost because of an irritation. It's an irritation of a sand, a little piece of sand in, a, in, a, in an oyster. Um, and it creates layer after layer and then it becomes this great pearl. So again, in my wisdom card deck, when I give my workshop, I said, out of what irritation did you create something unique for yourself? So it's to basically make people reflect that, you know, sometime in suffering, there is also some, some recipe or some um, great lesson to be learned. Pearl, next slide, please. Oh yeah, this is Hawaii. This is actually a mistake. <laughs> a good one. Uh, it's a little pocket camera and the shutter blocked. It was a full moon. And so I took a picture and the whole shutter got stuck. So something happens. As you see, the full moon is not the full moon anymore. And the little tip of the um, mountain in the distance copied itself. And I love it how that lining is like a gold little brush stroke. So this is the card in my card they called Torchbearer. In what ways do you carry light for others? And do you inspire others with or without knowing that? But we all inspire others in any ways, uh, one way or the other. I want more of that, or I don't want more of that. You get the drill. Next slide, please. Oh, yes. Um, clouds. Um, a friend of mine said they look like praying hands. And with me, it's really questioning, are they going towards each other or are they going out of each other? But I love the, I just love clouds. I do a lot of cloud gazing and shape is always moving. It's like the ocean, it's, it always changes. And I, um, it's good to look up in life, right? So chin up, mm -hmm. uh, next slide, please. Oh yes. Well. This was actually a picture taken from my deck in Sharon, where we live. And um, was this last summer? A huge storm gathered. It was summer, August, I think. Huge storm. And, and you just know that it's going to explode sooner or later. And you hope the, the electricity is not going to fall out, which in this case it didn't. But I like this, it, there's so many things again, cloud gazing, is it a ladder, is it an angel? What do you see in here? And, and it's the same with your life, right? What do you see? What is your perspective on life? And, and, and again, you know, what you see is who you are, et cetera. And so I like to make people think about what they see and be aware of, of how they look at life themselves because that will probably often also be a conduit for what you create in life. Next slide, please. Okay. And this is my, this is just showing what the landscape in the Arctic looks like. This is my husband who took a photo of me taking photos. And I love that always when people take photos of other people taking photos. So basically this is me on Narwhal watch. Uh, I have two cameras out there. The Narwhals um, are, 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 um, are expected to pass and it did pass eventually. Basically you're sitting in a tiny tent, it's freezing. 
thank God I put the boots on because the, the, the next time I went out, I didn't put the boots on and I paid dearly. Um, but the sun never sets in the summer in the Arctic. So the light changes just very beautifully. And um, you will, yeah, it's just to show the inspiration of, of, of being in a different area and the Arctic is phenomenal. Next slide, please. So this is the show for tomorrow. And I entitled it 50 Shades of Blue. Um, some of my photos are also in the Smithsonian Museum collection and my camera work, which I'm very proud of, part of an exhibit that my husband put together. Um, so we were just in Greenland this summer. It was quite the adventure with COVID, with tests and all. Uh, but we made it and then you get this as a gift, uh, open boat ride, eight hours with two Inuit. Um, and, and Ilulisat is a place where, uh, UNESCO now has a observation post. This is world heritage and it's as an environmental economist, I want to show the, both the strength of mother earth's ecosystems and the fragility. So you see hundreds of these icebergs just bopping around. And you know that eventually they will not be here anymore. So it's a sadness in a way. Uh, but on the other hand, it's also the marvel, the majesty. Next slide, please. So again, I just, I just played a, lot, a little bit with the blue here and it makes it like what you did, the Dutchman. I call you Dutchman, Ackerman. Um, you, you gave it a hint of an old photo, right? It's kind of a... Uh, something that you see when you go into a history channel, you see a movie from, uh, you know, 50 years ago, it looks like that. Next slide. And we're just going to get a little preview of what this show tomorrow is going to look like. I just bought this one um, because the clouds, again, sun doesn't set. Uh, I think we were on the boat from somewhere six to three in the morning. I mean, exhausting, but it's once in a lifetime, I guess um Good. it's gorgeous the clouds the convoy I, I don't need to need to speak mother earth speaks for herself next slide yeah i didn't know if i had to crop the water more on the bottom because if you blow it up it looks like a, an, an animal i try to always find a connection of of how something speaks to me it's me opening my heart and it looks like a pharaoh, a sphinx. I don't know. I see again. I, I have a vivid imagination. I'm also a writer for kids too. And um, yeah, this just spoke to me. It's 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 soft. It's they're soft sh shapes, but yet it's super strong. So again, Mother Earth. Yes, please. Next slide. Wow. Yeah, I called this one desert. Um, just because the sand dunes make me think about this, just to create connectivity with another ecosystem. And I first had it a little bit darker, but then Staples called and said, yeah, maybe we cannot print this, blah, blah, blah. So I started to see, wait, can we make a higher res out of this? So I started to fidget around and then I brought it more to the original tint. And actually I liked it better. So thanks Staple for, for questioning something because it made it better. So this I printed on laminated board. We'll see that how that will come out. Next slide, please. Yeah. This was, I don't know if it's a praying Buddha hands, if it's a bunny. I mean, there's just so much going on here. And this is not your typical iceberg. You know, the floating Buddha, like the Buddha head floating in, in the water, like the Buddha sleeping, so to speak. Uh, there's a heart shape somewhere. I mean, I always try to connect with love and light. It's just my mantra in life. And I find it soft. I find it a very soft, the way the, the whiteness reflects. So um, I first kicked it out of the exhibit and then I brought it back in. Next slide, please. This is actually huge. And I call this island um, right behind there's land. And then we went on land to, I interviewed an older Inuit that Martin had not seen for 15 years, an elder to talk more about evolution of narwhals was very interesting moment um, at one in the morning. Um, you just see the water inside there is this whole circle 
that's floating. So there is actually within this iceberg, there is its own little ecosystem um, that I thought was in interesting. Next slide, please. I love this one. It looks like icing on a cake. And I didn't want to play with the colors because the contrast of texture and light, I just felt like I wanted to bite into this in a way. Yeah. Tastes like sugary, you know, icing. Um, but once you blow things up, the texture, when you make it bigger, actually looks, looks really interesting. I love this one. Yeah, thank you. Next slide. Well, this is what you would expect, right? From the Arctic and, and so you have this Kenyan situation. Um, oh. So there's some depth. Um, and, you know, we, we needed that. It's like a peeping hole. And then in the meantime, the boat continues very fast. They don't want to stop because icebergs, there, there's also risk involved when you're too close to icebergs because something might crack and then, you know, you're, you're really at risk. So um, we kept going, but this whole thing, this scenery, if you imagine, changes every single, move, with every movement forward you take, this whole iceberg shifts. So this is just one of the facets of that same iceberg, of an iceberg that I, that I enjoyed looking at. And I think that's it. And there's a next slide. Oh, and there's might be a next slide. Yes, this one. I don't know, I see something again, Sphinx far, I see an animal in there, but I see a giant in there and there is some very masculine, this is a masculine photo. I don't know why I call this masculine. It just feels like- Very rugged. Yes, exactly, you got that. And I like geometry and color. Um, it's just, yeah, but there's a face of an owl too in the middle. Those eyes, I mean, this is again, I love just seeing things. Um, next slide, please. Okay. Well, that was the, yeah. More to come. And unfortunately, we can't have a reception. Otherwise, I would have, you know, slept some beautiful red wine and rose, but um, not allowed. Huh. Terrible. I can't I imagine why, actually. Yeah. But thank you so much, Pamela. That, that was beautiful. Thank you. Places I probably never going to see, but it's it's. Well, it's, I don't know. It's the last I, one was extended four times, so I don't think that will happen now. But you you can see it as of tomorrow afternoon in Sharon Town Hall. Thank you. Next one is Raphael Swift. Ralph, are you around? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. We've lost picture, but we still have sound, hopefully. And we can, okay. the can you see? <laughs> yep. Good. It's a cutie. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Petunia. yeah. Right. We call her Petunia. This was <laughs> actually the probably the first day out with the new lens. Yeah. We uh, had one of those. We called him Phil. Right. <laughs> Until we came back with the babies. Yeah, so the first few pictures are just uh, pictures with my new 150 to 600 lens. Wow, impressive. Yeah, local wildlife, basically. Yeah. 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 Is it using a tripod or is this handheld? Uh, this is all handheld. Uh -huh. Yeah. So this one in front of us is, uh, let me see, a 320th of a second. So the image stabilization on that lens is pretty impressive. Yeah, but I have the same lens, lens and I was going to say I have the same lens, but I'm not able to uh, hand hold it too shaky. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of them I'm braced on like trees or windowsills or cars okay. or, you know, anything. Right, right. Yeah. This is good. Who makes the lens? Uh, Tamron. Tamron, okay. Yeah, yeah that's what that's mine is too. That's the G2 of that the second generation is the one I got. This is really nice. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like this. Really good. Intentionally yeah. overexposed it a little bit, and then I gave it just a hint of color toning, just a little bit of blue. Just draws your eye to the bird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I like this guy. He's got its own racing stripe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what kind of bird that is? I don't know what that is. Uh, that was a grackle, but uh, really? oh. on feathers like what they call leucistic, it doesn't have any pigment. Yeah, I've not seen one like that. Okay. Yeah, it'd normally be black through there. Yeah, okay. But yeah. And then this is our That's local cute. rabbit that lives under a rock pile next to our driveway. <laughs> <laughs> yep, she's out all the time. Oh, gross beak again. Yep, yeah. another gross beak. He struck a pose, so he was a victim. Yeah, you can go to the next. Good shot, very sharp, very nice. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I really like this one. He looks like he's yeah. smiling at me. <laughs> yeah, oh, nice, nice detail in the feathers. Yeah, yeah. And then this one's a little more impressionistic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good. Good. Yep. Right. Just as I got the focus on him, he took off. So. <laughs> Uh, these are three ravens that were up at the head of my driveway and uh yeah, yeah. you can tell them apart <laughs> yeah from crows yep yeah. all right and then this is our annular eclipse this summer i got up before dawn and hiked up up to um, mount tom the watchtower up there Unfortunately, what you see in the foreground are actually trees. So right. <laughs> the view wasn't as good as I hoped it would be. So you can't really tell that much. Yep, but it was already moving by the time. It could be clouds. I actually like it a lot. This looks like, you know, some clouds. Just yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's some clouds. For Halloween, there's too. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this, and this, is, this is later on towards the end and I caught that airplane, airplane huh? out of the yeah. sky or the sun. Oh Can falls, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's what when we were there, yeah, with you guys. Yep, our plane. last our last meeting. <laughs> that came out good. Yeah. Yep, that's that's using the long lens too. So team was really nice. Didn't have filters for it, but uh with that much length, you know, you can get a much good better speed. Uh, let me see. Where is it? <laughs> Down below that. Right. There it is. Let's see. That's eight tenths of a second. You're good. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, Ooh, that's yes. <laughs> one of the little ones come to visit. <laughs> And uh, this is where I process fire. Heidi's favorite things. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that's nice. Oh, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's the soft is really nice. And yep. I'm using some foreground leaves to help add to the softness. Yeah. Is this and, then, <laughs> and then I just like this. It's like he's going, "What are you looking at?" Yeah. <laughs> Looking at me. <laughs> yep. Oh, I know. Right. Yep. There she is posing. I love the way the light just caught the eyes. Yeah. Bears up here. Yeah. This yep. is the hurricane. <laughs> yep. This is last day of Hurricane Ida. So he is just soaked. That's about a 250 pound guy there. We have Speedy three of them. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Right. yeah, and this was uh, fairly recent. This deer's got some weird, weird antler growth going on. Hmm. Hmm. So. Yep. Yep. There. Yeah. Thank you all. Yeah. Some really nice animal shots. Lovely. Beautiful. Am I unmuted? Yeah, very nice. Steve is coming up. It's all black and white. We ran out of colors. Yeah, I had gotten. Um, <laughs> I'm using a, a Leica monochrome camera. It's a digital camera, but it only shoots black and white. It doesn't have the color filter on it. So most of these pictures <clears throat> are in New York, uh, where I was playing around with the monochrome. Um, this is in Bryant Park. I just like the lines and the people in the foreground. Um, 
Interesting. Go to the next one. Oh, this is uh, what I like to do in New York. Uh, there's actually pigeons on the bottom, which I didn't get, but <clears throat> just the collection of images in some of the uh, uh, street uh, uh, photos that you see. Uh, so I just found this, uh, this interesting. There's somebody in a dress. There's obviously an erotic image there and some other stuff. So when I'm walking around New York, um, I like to take pictures of um, uh, street art, if you will. Nice collection. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just a school, a uh, bunch of kids walking along Central Park. Uh, you can't really see it that well here, but they're all wearing masks. Uh, the teachers are up there kind of leading. And this guy just looked back at, at, at me as, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> so... Um, I probably would have cropped this more, but um, the guy's just sitting there. He's in a suit. He's got a cup of coffee. There's garbage all around him. And in the background, Central Park almost looks like a, like a painting. Yeah. <laughs> That's very, very well caught. Uh, this is one more of that street art things. Um, I probably, this probably would have been better in color, but you can see there's, um, she's looking down at this, uh, abandoned chair that's there and there's this other piece of garbage there and mm. this guy is smiling <clears throat> again it's just the street art that i like to uh uh to photograph when i'm in new york it's good to find yeah yeah oh, it's a new camera so you're playing with it yeah it's playing with it's actually a color image but it's almost like a black and white image with the lines uh and you see a little bit of color there um but uh, the other fun thing uh, you do in street photography is the, uh, uh, the store windows in New York. Some of them are, are quite creative and quite uh, evocative like, uh, like this one. Uh, this one is, uh, uh, it's almost like a movie set. So you've got the, uh, the smoke, the steam and she's walking. And then there's a guy in the, uh, doorway just ahead of her. So it almost tells a story. I got a kick out of uh, this one after I looked at it. It's a classic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. Uh, this is Grand Central. Uh, just shooting in black and white, pl uh, playing with monochrome. Uh, you see the light and just the light hitting her from the back and she's standing on this uh, grid uh, backlit. I just like the lines of this, uh, this picture. Apples. And the apple uh, on either side of her, the apple uh, insignia, and then the, uh, the the people on the top with another apple insignia. I kind of uh, I kind of like this uh, composition. Never see it so empty. Uh, yeah, well, there's another one here where it's a longer view, and uh, the interesting thing is when I was going to Grand Central uh, earlier in the pandemic, um, I saw people playing catch because there were two people in the hole. Uh, terminal. And when I was there this week and last week, uh, when I took this picture, uh, it was actually quite crowded and almost back to normal. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, that's um, more, more, a little bit more. Previous. That's more of a that's the new normal. There. Yeah, that's uh, but you can see there's kind of uh, a lot of shadows, but a lot of people um, up at the Apple store uh, down at the terminal. But again, um, I like the the grids on the floor and the light coming in. Uh, and with black and white, you're looking at light and shadow. Um, so that's what I've been playing with. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, <clears throat> this is just the dog uh, uh, saying hello. She's got the dog in her backpack. Um, you know, it's kind of a funny image. Uh, this one, um, you know, uh, this was in Central Park and it's mothers and kids playing. It almost... Group. seemed to me it's a play group it seemed to me like almost a peter pan type thing with uh people playing in the woods uh and i just like the the sunlight uh, uh hitting it and the, the the lines of it uh and it's interesting shooting um in black and white when you know the background is all green and their shirts are all different colors uh and then with black and white you kind of reduce it to um uh quite a bit so it's an interesting discipline hmm. Uh, That's my is, yeah, this is the meditation um, uh, fountain in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And I was sitting there taking pictures of it. 
And then this woman stepped um, behind, right in the center of the composition. Uh, it looks kind of erotic, but it's not. She was dressed and she's <laughs> just wearing jeans and a t-shirt, but um, uh, just the, uh, uh, the composition of just the torso, you don't see her head, and then the fountain, uh, I kind of like the composition and it worked well in black and white. Ooh. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, this is just um, in the museum. Uh, I really like the lines of that statue, um, especially in black and white, where you're reducing uh, a lot of the noise around it. But uh, it's something where I just like the uh, the lines of that particular statue uh, within that that quiet hallway. Yeah, this um, it's a manual focus camera. This didn't come out in focus, which I didn't notice after, but. It was just a real peaceful scene where she was uh, just sitting there reading a book. There was nobody else around. Um, so, and this one again, I just like the, uh, the street photo. I just like the lines where he's um, uh, he's bending over and doing something with the with the mechanics. Uh, you have the bikers in the background. So, uh, yeah, I thought this was kind of cute. Where I'm standing by the. Um, a passageway in Central Park and this little dog walks out, kind of taking a stroll, nobody else around. It's kind of kind of funny. And that was uh, that was it. There's just a few um, black and white pictures, but it, it, it's interesting because um, the camera is completely manual. Um, it's just black and white um, and um, just uh, exploring it, exploring it. Well, that's you have done a good job at it. Yeah, exploration. All right. I didn't mean to put you to the last one, Tom, but that's how it came out. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, the risk of going last is super yeah. saturation here. Yeah, visual. You never know. You never know. All right, here you go. Thanks, everyone, for hanging in there. Um, it's nice to meet most of you because even though I'm, I'm a recent member, I've been pretty much completely dormant. So this is my first interaction with the club. So oh. I appreciate it. And uh, like Dawn, I just got back from Acadia National Park uh, where I've gone for the past 50 years. Oh. Oh. So I just, these are all the, a, a few photographs just from my recent trip. And, and that trip was, a, was really vacation. It was family, it was social. So I was grabbing what I could, where I could. Uh, I, I do a lot of paddling um, like Nancy. So this is from my kayak and uh, you'll see some others from the kayak as well. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I do a, a lot, I try to interact with the loons a great deal. And again, all from my kayak. Uh, the, the remarkable wow. thing, I mean, everybody loves loons, but the amazing thing there is that you've got multiple generations that have grown up seeing people in kayaks and they're, they're relatively habituated. Uh, it's just finding them and having the patience to stay with them. Oh, it doesn't look real. You know, it's, it's so close, so sharp. Oh. That's beautiful. So I'm, I'm hand holding the equivalent of about 750 millimeters uh, on, on Nikon. And here's, this is a juvenile. I, I tend to go in August, which is a little bit late to get the young, you know, you've seen the classic photos of the, of the chicks riding on the parents' backs, uh, which is, I, I've gotten in some previous years that by August, like this last trip, they're in, in juvenile form, you see here. Yeah. But um, Acadia is a great place to work. Uh, I mean, it's been good to me. I've, I've done two exhibit format books on Acadia, including uh, their centennial book in 2016 for the National Park. Uh, but it's got great variety with the mountains and the surrounding islands. Here are seals on a rock ledge uh, out on an island. Uh, next, please. Oh, my. And uh, 
this was a young uh, harbor seal and we boated out to 25 miles out to what's called Mount Desert Rock and there was a tide pool and these young seals were playing they were racing in and out of the tide pool and I crept down to the edge and this one just caught my eye when he popped up Wow. Oh, look at this. Yeah. And lots of gulls, of course, being on the seacoast. Uh, here, a herring gull with its juvenile chick right behind it. You got so close. I mean, that lens is amazing. Well, it's, yeah, you know, you can't beat big lenses to get close. Uh, it's a, the challenge is hand holding it a lot of the time, especially from the kayak. Yeah, uh, it is always a tough one. But I love the variety up there. Um, wow. <laughs> and when I get on to something uh, like this eagle, uh, I see a lot of eagles there. They're fairly habitual. And uh, it just takes a lot of patience. I'll just wait and wait for a moment like this and try to be ready, which is often hard in a drifting kayak and in the breeze. And most of these wing shots are around a 1200th or a 1600th of a second. Okay. Wow. Cool. So uh, the house we had was surrounded by a beautiful garden and the hummingbirds were just coming in off and on pretty much all day long. And as you know, they, they've got a terrifically high metabolism. So they really have to feed in pretty short intervals. So I would just stand there sometimes for hours, but I always knew they would come back. The hard part is hand holding. A tripod just didn't work because I, I would have, they're too quick. They're almost in constant motion, buzzing from flower to flower. So I had to hand hold, autofocus, and shoot really fast. And this one worked well with the soft background, I thought. Uh, next, please. Oh, look at this. Wow. So I, we were fortunate to have an osprey nest. Uh, it, had, it had run the course of rearing the young and they'd vacated the nest, but they hung around the area. And uh, so I had, a number of good opportunities with the ospreys and this just this shot fascinated me just seeing it launch off the branch virtually upside down it spotted something in the ocean below so it's commencing a dive down to the water that's incredible so you know having i've really been a conservation photographer my whole career and you know, in, in contrast to what Bert showed, which was so creative and artistic, I, as a conservation photographer, I have to play it pretty straight because there has to be a trust from the viewer assigned to what they see that I authentically experienced mm -hmm. that. And that's very important to me. It's, it's more about the experience even than the photograph. And the, even though I'm pretty much retired now that's what keeps me going is I just I love that the process of being out there and the creative act of photographing uh, next Laszlo yeah, look at this one. yeah we were we were having a picnic on an offshore island one day and this turn was just feeding uh relentlessly on in the shallows right in front of us. I, there were very small minnows running right along the edge of the, of the water line. So it was a great opportunity. Again, just handheld. Another hummingbird in, in the series. I, I probably took over 200 frames of hummingbirds, but you just, you play the odds. That's the only way it's a, to do it when the action's that fast and you know a third of them are out of focus at least i'm not sure whether this is a sub-adult male uh it's certainly an immature i think next please okay i like this one because it's sort of the, the simple purity of it 
with the, the ocean as the background and just that one blooming plant. Like a Japanese. And the, the, yeah, yeah, it has that Japanese simplicity of line. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. And here, just playing around a multiple exposure of lily pads. Uh, again, taken from the kayak. Uh, one thing I really like having come from film with, with digital are these rotating camera backs that would let me hold the camera overhead and look at the, uh, you know, the panel on the back to, to be able to compose yeah. from higher up when I'm stuck on the water line. And next, please. That may be it. Uh -huh. uh, just one of the many waterfalls in Acadia. It's, you know, if you've been there, the whole island is pretty much granite. So when we get a heavy rain, uh, which this was the night before, the water just flows instantly in massive runoffs. So what will be dry streams and pretty much bare rock faces become overnight, literally just new waterfalls. Gorgeous. Uh, next. Ooh. Yeah, and the forest there, especially this summer with the unprecedented rains, uh, was just so verdant. Uh, it was almost more like the Pacific Northwest. Everything covered with ferns, mosses, mushrooms. So that was a good opportunity. Uh, this was an HDR shot combining three different exposures because of the extreme, uh, extreme light tonality ranges. Beautiful tones. Uh, next. Yeah, and I just, I, I like the, again, the simplicity of this, of line and, and shape against the black water. Um, and once again, from the kayak. I'm pretty much a tripod photographer, though. I, that's sort of the way mm -hmm. I've, I've always done it. Uh, digital has loosened me up a lot, which has been great uh, with the variable ISOs and the versatility of it. Uh, this is simply a rock abstract taken along the shore. That's really nice. And here a marsh bog, uh, fresh water shot halfway up one of the mountain sides with a telephoto. I love patterns and textures. It sort of drives a lot of my work. And this is actually one of the trails, one of my favorite trails in Acadia, uh, going up a rocky gorge. Uh, this is also an HDR shot combining exposures. There is a spot, almost something like this, you know, in in uh, in Mohawk Mountain. That's I saw that. That's where you took the picture. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I know everything here is Acadia, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, with COVID, uh, that's a, a whole other story and slideshow. I've been doing a lot of work around here and, and finding some areas very similar to this, which yeah. is wonderful. And there we go. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, thanks all. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Sean. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. That was Brilliant. Beautiful wow. pictures. Absolutely great pictures. All right. Uh, so here we are, back to the main screen. <laughs> and I think that was it. Did anyone fall asleep or? <laughs> no, those were all wonderful that's pictures. No, that's good. Yeah. We are still all over here. I think we had a good, good show. I think we had probably better than we ever did. Beautiful. Yeah, good participation and nice variety. Hey, Laszlo, I did want to mention one thing. So uh, we did the first meeting here uh, with Zoom. We do want to resume in-person meetings. So that is going to be our goal is to try to do that as soon as soon as possible. So. 
I, I think we're planning on trying to do October face to face. So uh, let's just uh -huh. we'll see we'll see what happens. We don't know what this Delta variant, but anyway, every month that's going to be the plan, and uh, we'll see as we get closer. So just uh, keep keep on top of your email so that you can see which way we've decided to go. Um, we'll we'll let you know a little bit ahead of time. We do have a new meeting place though, um, and Noble Horizons. Uh, Early summer, we got the okay to go back there and uh, we were going to resume our meetings there. And then with this Delta variant, they came back to us and said that they, they just can't have people uh, back there again. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so we, we can't use Noble um, yeah. in the foreseeable future. So but Jeff has gotten the okay to have the meetings at his church, which is... I think it's on the border of Sharon, or is it, is it Sharon and uh, Amenia? Sharon yes. and Amenia. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, now, that's uh, St. Thomas. I bring up two other options. One of them is Bela, so kindly offered his house um, for, a, for, a, for a meeting. They got a gigantic, really, really big living room. Really it's like a converted bar, and so it's like a hayloft, uh, oh, big space. So you can actually socially distance, even if you're inside. Yeah. Really? Okay. So that's um, uh, that's uh, that's another option, and the other one is the place where we're going to have the show, the UCC Parish House, and they would give it to us under the same conditions, you know, like uh, the the place that Jeff got for us. You know, we give them ten dollars donation for each meeting, and that one is actually quite a bit bigger than um, uh, the parish house at the other church. Um, Where is it located? That that <laughs> one is in Cornwall. Okay. Well, I mean, we have three options, and I guess uh, I'm going to consider them all temporary because I'm hoping that we can eventually get back to Noble. So maybe for this season, we just uh, alternate. And, you yeah, know, we... some people are going to have to drive a little farther if it's out at Amenia, and then others are going to have to drive a little farther if it's in Cornwall. So, you know, maybe we break it up a little bit and it, or mix it up a little bit so that, uh, you know, maybe we use all three meeting places at various times. I think the Wi-Fi would be the only issue, right? Whichever one would have the best Wi-Fi, so that. Yeah, we know that the church that Jeff got does have Wi-Fi, but we haven't actually, you know, tested yeah, it, other showing place. a video or something. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've been in that church. I've I've been in St. Thomas's. It it's right at the circle at South Amenia Road and right. border of Sharon. Yeah. So it has Wi-Fi. It has. Um, I don't think it has a screen. For the for a projector, so we considered uh, purchasing one. We we have enough funds to do that, and you can get one for like a hundred dollars. So um, we do we do have to look into that. But uh, otherwise, I think it was a twenty five dollar fee, and they had a full kitchen and um, you know the supplies and stuff to, for coffee and um whatnot so it wasn't bad i haven't seen the one that laszlo has but i assume it's kind of the same setup where they probably have a kitchen setup or something right and where is bella's location yeah where's i mean bella? i'm in uh, cornwall well actually sharon but off, just off of route seven uh, okay near west cornwall okay i assume you can serve us coffee <laughs> i can serve <laughs> gallons of coffee coffee's important <laughs> no <laughs> For me, anyway. <laughs> and I have excellent Wi-Fi, so you know I'm happy to do it okay. if that's if that's of interest. All right. So, uh, so, so just uh, like I said, uh, you know, keep up on your email, and uh, we'll make some decisions and let you know what's decided for October. I'm not even sure what our program is for October. Do you know what it is, Laszlo? I think we have well, a speaker. That's interesting. I don't know if it is going to work out or not because we are going back and forth with Jonathan Duster on this thing. He volunteered to give us a, a, a presentation on how to shoot with, uh, with with iPhone, and you know he gave us presentations before. He's a pretty good guy, you know, and he's from yep. Sharon. The only thing that he has decided now that he wants to go to Canada. So during the time when he would have given us the presentation, so I don't know what's going to happen. 
okay, uh, okay. they might not let him into Canada, you know, so uh, maybe he's going to stick around. And so I got to figure that one out. Yeah. I think Canada's letting the U.S. people go in, but uh, the U.S. is not letting Canadians go in. But... <laughs> a little bit more complicated. Yeah. All yeah. right. So we'll we'll let people know then what the program is and where it's going to be located. So we still got some things to work out, I guess, for October. So, all right. I want to make an, uh, a plug in for the uh, this year we doing again the NECCC. Uh, sending in pictures and the PSA. So by this weekend, I'm going to ask for two images from the people who want to be in the NECCC competition. So uh, watch for my email. <laughs> and, and for new members that maybe no, don't know what that is, like I said, I if you haven't already gotten the HCC high quality user guide, I guess, which explains what that is. Um, I will be sending that out as a refresher to all members. So when I get home tomorrow, within the next couple of days, I'll get that out so that you'll understand what that PSA and triple C is and what we're looking for, or the sizing of the photos and how to present them, etc. Okay, thank you. Great. All right. Okay. Anything else? Not for me. Well, good night. Bravo uh, to Laszlo right. and Dawn. Yep. Yes, drive me. safely, okay? Watch the roads. <laughs> it was great to meet all the new people. Yes, yes. It was, it was Laszlo. It was Laszlo. <laughs> what did I do? Bye bye. See you all soon. right, bye bye. Bye, bye. 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 bye.